Well, Maricopa County Community College decided last February to drop football effective at the end of this season. They're keeping players on scholarship through 2019. Here to discuss this whole decision and what's next is Joe Kirsten, the former head coach at Glendale Community College. Joe, you've been a, an advocate of keeping community college football alive. Where are we today? Here we are in August. Where are we today? Well, at the end of this season, football's over in Maricopa County unless something changes. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we put together a group, a movement, to uh, save junior college football in the state of Arizona and specifically in Maricopa County. So uh, we, want, we want a seat at the table. You know, there was no seat at the table for a stakeholder that represented football when, when the, when the uh, uh, task force that studied athletics went through their process. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we'd like to get that communication out there and, and hopefully, uh, you know, make a difference. That task force is telling us that they need more than $20 million just to renovate stadiums, keep football alive here. You're not necessarily in agreement with those numbers. Is that true? Uh, absolutely. The, the, just recently, I guess the uh, president of Glendale said, well, it's not over 20 million to upgrade the stadium. It's more like 4 million. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that number is correct or not, but uh, just give you a reference point. Ottawa University just started a football program right. and just built a brand new facility with a weight room, with coaches' offices, uh, with locker rooms, field turf, 8.7 million for a brand new facility. For everything. Yeah, but our facility is gonna take over 20 million to renovate. What, where are we right now? Now my understanding is each of the four community colleges here in this group, uh, Glendale, Scottsdale, Phoenix College, and Mesa have two coaches that they pay for. Is that correct? A head well, they, coach they and have, one assistant? They have two full-time assistants full -time. on campus, okay. and then they have a few stipends. When I was coaching, I think we had three stipend positions. Okay. And you usually take that $3,000 and split it up to get a couple so of So it's bare bones is it what is. I'm saying. That's it what really I'm getting is. at. And how many kids are served now, right now, as football players? Well, typically when you have freshman and sophomore classes, which right now they don't have a full freshman class because of the, the uh, decision, right. uh, we would serve well over 100 athletes per, per program. Yeah. So you're well over 400 athletes every year that yeah. are going to lose out on opportunities if this doesn't change. So your hashtag save JC football, how can people take part in this? How can they get involved in that? What's the best way for them to get involved. You know you have a GoFundMe page as well. We do have a GoFundMe page, but the, the main thing is, is sign our petition, and our petition's on my Facebook page, uh, Joe Kirsting. You can email me, joekirsting at hotmail.com. Um, love to see you get involved. You know, and this is really going to affect parents and children of now high school, Correct. middle school, and grade school kids. And so you parents out there, if you want athletics in your schools, you need to do something about it now. Well, we're talking about a void for football kids. I mean, kids that come out of high school and want to continue, there are very few places that are affordable that they can still go on and play and hopefully make that jump to a four-year school with a scholarship in a couple of years. Absolutely. And, you know, these schools, they average having 20 athletes a year get scholarships to move on. Wow. Glendale alone, Mickey Bell, who's the head coach, mm -hmm. he took over for me many years ago, he did a study about a year or two ago and his graduates from Glen, not graduates, but transfers, because right. they don't all have to trans, all have to graduate. His transfers are receiving like 1.5 million dollars worth of scholarships at wow. the universities, on a program that costs about 200 thousand dollars to run. Hmm. So what a return on investment for for the young men in yeah. our our community colleges. Well, there's so many kids playing high school football and it's just, it, it's that next step for those kids that want to continue to play. And with that gone, where do they go? What do they do next? Right. And we've got, you know, the three major colleges in the state. Not many athletes are going to get recruited by them. And now we've got two NAIA schools and those are good options, but they're expensive. Expensive. Yeah. You know, um, I, I coached at Arizona Christian. It was mm -hmm. about 25,000 a year for tuition to go to school there. And yeah. they give partial scholarships, but it's still an awful big yeah. chunk of change. What's the hope right now, Joe, that we can, that you, your group can continue with community college football? Uh, we're going to change the governing board. Okay. That, that, that's our primary objective right now is uh, get the word out, talk about our candidates. We have four candidates we feel very strongly about. They're also being supported by the faculty associations uh, in the district. And uh, so we, we want to get those four, three men, one woman elected to the governing board. That gives us an advantage. There's seven positions on the governing board. If we swept all four, we would have four strong people in our corner, plus there's one or two on the board right now that are pretty good uh, supporters of 
Now, the head coaches for the four community colleges currently haven't said anything about this. What, why are they not out front talking about this? Well, that's a good question. Um, there's a gag order, oh, but right now, if you ask the people at the district office, they would say, oh, we don't know anything about a gag order. But I've spoken to all four of these coaches many times mm -hmm. since February, since the decision. We've met and talked. Uh, that's why I've gotten involved. That's, that's the biggest reason yeah. I've gotten involved. I'm, a, I'm retired, you know, they can't fire me. <laughs> uh, but all of these coaches were told right up front. In fact, I've read the email that was sent to them. Everything that should be funneled to the district office when it pertains to the elimination of football. But now lately they're backing off on that statement. So we'll see where things go from here. Yeah. Well, anyone that's been involved in football knows the value of kids playing football. And I know we've heard a lot about CTE and injuries and those kind of things, but the value and the, I guess, the intrinsic lessons learned, the life lessons learned from playing football uh, far outweigh the dangers. Well, well I, I, be I, believe, I believe that too. You know, uh, just, I, I met uh, Rich Tomey recently who, uh, is Dick Tomey's son, mm -hmm. and he, he runs a program for, uh, for youth athletics and uh, Positive Coaching Alliance, or what it's called. And he gave me a statistic. 95% of Fortune 500 CEOs played athletics. Mm -hmm. That's not just by luck. Right. You know, the lessons they learn, cooperation, teamwork, sacrifice for one another, you know, all of these lessons that... Getting that, up when you've been knocked down. Exactly. Right? Things, yeah. Ad, dealing with adversity, absolutely. Yeah. And um, since this whole thing is, has, has come down, the positive for me is I've run into a lot of my former <laughs> players and I've gotten a lot of positive feedback of yeah. the lessons they learned yeah. at their time at Glendale Community College. Have you had any contact now with Maricopa County Community College District to talk about this or what's happening? I've sent an email to the chancellor she said at this time, there's no um, plan to talk about. Decisions been made. Yes. Um, but she said at this time. So things could change. We'll see. Um, you know, one of the things I ran across just recently, and I, I didn't know this till about a day or two ago, is Un University of New Mexico has dropped four athletic programs. Mm -hmm. And the attorney general in the state of New Mexico thinks it was done illegally. Um, I don't know what's going to happen with that case, but to me, this is very similar to what's happened here because nobody that's involved, that was involved in the decision making here, was a stakeholder. There was no parents on the, on the task force. There was no athletes. There were no coaches. There wasn't even an athletic director of a football playing institution on the task force. So, if you don't allow the stakeholders to be part of the decision process, you know, I think that might be against state law. Now we had heard rumors of a lawsuit early on in this situation. Is there any any truth to that? Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure on that. I'm not okay. involved in that aspect of yeah. things. Uh, I'm sort of saying in my lane and my lanes about trying to uh, endorse our candidates mm -hmm. and uh, you know get, get a change on the governing board. Thanks for, for sure. coming in Joe. Appreciate you. Good luck. Thank you.